Thanks for pressing record. We'll go ahead and get started today. I'll also just note if folks filter in, that's okay. Uh, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat. And um, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and begin our virtual lunch and learn today. Hi, everyone. My name is Annalise Cothran. I use she, her pronouns. And I am the executive director and co-founder of the American Institute of Dental Public Health. And today, during this lunch and learn series, we're going to be chatting about veteran oral health. So I designed this to be a little bit interactive, but if you're watching this asynchronously, you'll still get all the benefit. No worries. We are also available to chat after you've watched this session. So our information is available on the very last slide. Please feel free to reach out anytime if you're not able to join us live. Okay, I'm gonna skip this question and give you a little bit of background about AIDPH. Uh, in case you have not heard about the American Institute of Dental Public Health, we are a 501c3 nonprofit and we are committed to transforming dental public health practice through science, education, and advocacy. And so those are the three content areas that I'll kind of touch on today as we learn about veteran oral health together. And ultimately, at the end of the day, AIDPH really wants to advocate for a justice-oriented oral health system. And part of health justice is ensuring adequate access to care, which is something that we're gonna talk a lot about today. AIDPH's mission is to empower our community to advance oral health through science, education, and advocacy, and our vision is a justice-oriented oral health system. I want to reiterate that because these are brand new for us. Um, AIDPH just went through a really dedicated um, branding and strategic planning uh, vision system last year. And as we did that, we recognized that our emphasis on community engagement needed to be at the forefront of describing who we are and what we do since it's such an integral part of our work. So we're also going to talk about community engagement today, particularly within the veteran oral health space. This workshop and others like it are part of the AIDPH Academy. Um, this is not new, meaning we have always done webinars, workshops, learning collaboratives, fellowships, et cetera. But putting it all together, unifying it under the hub of AIDPH Academy is now an important part of how we offer our educational um, opportunities. All of these opportunities are designed to be complementary to formal education and training. And like many of you uh, who may be joining us or watching us asynchronously, you may really want to invest in um, formal training around dental public health, whether that be through the form of a dental public health residency or other types of trainings um, through a formal academic system. And we are very much in favor of that. And if that's the case, uh, our opportunities and learnings can help support your educational trajectory. If not, there are many students who are very interested in dental public health, but simply don't have the time or ability to invest in a formal academic experience, experience like through a residency program. And so we design a lot of our programming to help support students who are interested in learning more about dental public health, but who may not be interested um, or it may not be available to them to pursue a specialization in that field. And so I just wanted to note that we have lots of opportunities available for you to learn about dental public health in the space that feels right for your time and your capacity. AIDPH has four core communities of focus, um, LGBTQIA plus people, veterans, people with disabilities, and rural communities. And we also work at the intersection of all of those communities. So it might be queer veterans or rural veterans or people with disabilities living in rural areas. Um, so today we are gonna talk about veterans and um, there's a, a heavy emphasis today talking about particularly disabled veterans and the healthcare systems that are available to disabled veterans through the VHA. Uh, I don't know how many of you may have heard of community-engaged research. It's called a few different things. Sometimes it's called patient-centered research. Um, sometimes it's called community-participatory research or community-based research. Um, AIDPH has taken this model of community-engaged research 
and really invested in what that means to us and how we implement it in our organization. And so through this community engaged model, again, as I mentioned earlier, at the forefront of the work that we do is community. Um, our core communities are focus and how we engage with them in a really um, authentic and dedicated way is, is a core practice of ours. So how we engage in community, community engaged research is uh, we bring knowledge, technical skill, research capacity, and we partner with community members who have lived experience, um, who are representative of that community, um, and who directly benefit from the work that we do. And through that uh, process, we are able to co-create research. We share a strategic vision for implementing research. We build authentic and credible relationships with communities that are longstanding and established. And at the core of that, we make sure that there is trust um, around data ownership. And some of the ways that you'll see that play out with how AIDPH um, implements this model is through our research. And I'm gonna present a little bit of our research later, but I wanna just note from the very beginning um, that when I talk about veteran oral health, that it's through this community engaged lens. And I'm happy to chat more about that later if there are questions in the end as we go through this lunch and learn. But part of what we do, um, this started for us in the veteran space uh, at a, about, gosh, four years ago now, three or four years ago now. We were approached by our partners at CareQuest Institute for Oral Health, and they asked us, what do you know about veteran oral health? And I, I sort of had to transparently say, I don't really know anything. Um, my husband is a veteran and a Purple Heart recipient. I am a beneficiary of the military medical system. So my personal lived experience um, around veterans and what they experience with their oral health was very different than my academic and research experience as it relates to veteran oral health. And so I really had to go out and educate myself. I just said, I really don't know what is available. And after that um, kind of personal discovery, I realized that there really isn't much out there available on veteran oral health. And in fact, everything I could find fit on about one piece of paper. There was no research, there was very little information. And what I did find honestly confused me further because the medical system available for, veteran, for veterans is fairly complex. And we're gonna get into that um, in our discussion here today. But when I saw that there was very little information available, my next instinct was to say, what can I do to help gather data, to help gather information? And our partners at CareQuest said, let's work together to see what we can do to research this topic. And so the first thing that we did was go to veteran organizations and say, tell us what we don't know. Help us understand from your lived experience what your oral health care looks like. And so throughout 2021 and into 2022 and beyond, AIDPH and CareQuest Institute partnered with veteran service organizations like the VFW, like Disabled American Veterans, Paralyzed Veterans of America, um, and other VSOs nationally, and some state-based and local VSOs to disseminate research and surveys and say, help us collect data. And after that, let's publish together. So many of the publications that you'll see, which I'll show later in our discussion today, have, co have been co-authored um, or otherwise endorsed by veterans because it was collected through a community engaged lens and our veteran service organizations, um, our partners there have a vested interest in implementing that research toward advocacy um, to improve veteran oral health care. So AIDPH has been really honored to be leading this work nationally. It's really important to us both personally and professionally. Um, and we're really happy and, and pleased to share the work that we've been doing the past few years with all of you today. We also recently implemented our Oral Health Community Advisory Board. So as part of an extension and 
really deep in commitment to community engagement and programming, we are now uh, implementing a community advisory board through our research. And you'll see um, with those core communities of focus that I showed earlier, there are lots of people who have lived experience from all four of those communities. And again, who have that intersectional lived experience that span multiple communities. So we can also talk about community advisory boards if questions come up around community engaged research and how we've been able to leverage community engagement um, to support advancing oral health for veterans. So let's give an overview of veteran oral health. Some of this might be a little bit elementary, but I also realize, based on my own personal experience that I shared, that a lot of people don't know this information. And it's not necessarily because, um, it, it's not for any other reason other than it's hard to navigate and find this information. You know, somebody like myself, again, who we are a veteran family, I didn't know any of this information until I had studied it for several months. So let's talk a little bit about how dental benefits are available for veterans here in the US. The first thing to know is that there are two healthcare systems. One is administered by the VHA or the Veteran Health Administration. The other one is administered by the Department of Defense. Um, all of those are determined by Congress. It is determined in federal code who can access what and to what degree. So the Department of the Defense administers healthcare benefits for active duty military members and their families, and in some cases for military members who have retired. That's part of the healthcare system that we're not going to focus on today. What we will be talking about is the other piece of that, which is the healthcare system um, implemented by the Veteran Health Administration. So Congress designates how you are eligible for that health care and to what degree under Title 38. Interestingly, Title 38 has not been revised in about 70 years when it comes to dental care eligibility. It is a very, very limited amount of veterans who are eligible for that. And in order to make changes to Title 38 of the federal code, two things have to happen. One, there has to be a vote and a policy changed by Congress. So that means both the House and the Senate have to agree to amend the code, um, usually through some sort of policy process. And there has to be budget allocated for that in the federal budget in order to change the code and then fund the care associated with that. The VHA is broken up into different systems called VISMs, which are Integrated Service Networks, Veteran Integrated Service Networks. And I bring this up because in many ways, the care is fragmented by these VISMs. So sometimes these VISMs are really large, like Texas is its own VISM. Um, some of these are a little bit smaller. And the health delivery system, along with the medical records don't necessarily always talk between all of these visits. And so while the eligibility is the same among all of the visits, the care delivery system, um, the number of clinics, all of that can be different depending on where you live in the US. So right now, I actually found this really cute graphic um, on a website called Dentably. And I bring it up because it's an emergency dental website. So I was just looking for, you know, interesting ways to present this information. And I found a lot of information on veteran dental care on an emergency dentist website. And I think that's really interesting. We'll bring up why later. But right now the VA has about 200 locations nationally with a dental clinic. So if you are eligible for care through the VA, you can get care through a VA dental clinic. 200 locations nationally is not very many. Um, and the only people who can go into those VA dental clinics are veterans who are eligible for care through the VA. So care 
um, through the VA and who is eligible for it is broken up by different priority groups or classes. So I think there's like six different priority groups and your ability to access care through the VA as a veteran is determined by Congress and federal code through these priority groups. Um, most of the time you are eligible for care, dental care, if you are at a hundred percent disability rating. That's essentially what this comes down to. But I wanna note that in certain cases and in certain programs, like for veterans who are currently unhoused or who may be experiencing um, a medical issue like cancer, they can go for a, what's called a one-time, Sarah, at the very bottom, a one-time course of dental care to get them into what's considered functioning or to meet an urgent need. So sometimes you may not be eligible for comprehensive care, but in very limited ways, veterans can get a one-time course of treatment in order for them to be what's considered functioning, um, have their dentition functioning, right? So not prevention. Um, at that point, it's really getting them to bare minimum standard care. So as we've talked all about eligibility and some of the nuance behind it, some of the research that AIDPH did in that 2021 um, research wave, we just asked. As I pointed out, we talked about visions, we talked about eligibility, we talked about classes, um, and that was actually a really high level overview. I'm not going in depth on any of this. Um, some of our research indicated that veterans don't know what they are eligible for, that many times the system is really complex navigating it. Um, and that it's very clear when they're eligible for medical care through the VA. Um, but when they were asked, do you know if you're eligible for dental care through the VA? Almost 50% said, I have no idea. And that's because this class system and how to navigate it um, can be confusing um, for veterans uh, who are VA beneficiaries and for lots of folks who are not VA beneficiaries, like unhoused veterans, knowing that they can get even a one-time course of care um, is probably not accessible to them. So all of this boils down to this graphic right here, which is of the 18 million veterans here in the U.S., about half of them get care through the VHA. So the other half can be DOD or private insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of that 9 million, that kind of um, darker blue over there, about 82% of veterans are not eligible for dental care. So in the VHA, 82% of veterans can walk into a medical appointment and leave it in pain um, or needing prevention or other types of dental care, and they are not eligible to get care through the VA. That means they have to rely on private practice care, going to an FQHC, um, and whatever else they need to do because they cannot get care through the VA. And that means that all of you, um, as future dental providers, it's very likely that you'll be seeing veterans because they won't be seen in the VA. So it's really important for you to understand the unique healthcare needs of veterans um, and some of the clinical considerations given so many veterans are actually seen outside of the VA system. Now, here at AIDPH, we believe that the VA is the best place for veterans to be seen because the VA is the largest integrated healthcare system in the nation. It is the best poised um, to be able to provide care for veterans in a culturally affirming way um, that's really attuned to trauma-informed care and all of the things that veterans really need to be successful especially given so many veterans are getting their medical there um, and really need that integrated healthcare approach. So let's talk about, well, before I do that, I put this quote in here um, because this is a quote from a veteran that I personally spoke to whenever we were doing all of our survey research. Um, he actually completed our survey and he emailed me and he said, man, I just really need help and I don't know what else to do. So I was able to give him some information on the VA dental insurance program, but he had not been to the dentist in five years. Um, he knew that his oral health was not good, and he felt a lot of guilt and shame about that. And he really just wanted his health and well-being to improve. He didn't want to gross his kids out. That's what he told me over the phone. 
He just really wanted to have a better lived experience and a higher quality of life by having his oral health care addressed. And so even though he was on 80% disability from the VA, um, he had an 80% disability rating, he was still not eligible for dental care, and he suffered quite a bit. So this is the position that many veterans are in. This is not an uncommon thing to hear, and that's why AIDPH is doing the work that we are doing. So why does integrated healthcare matter, particularly for veterans? Um, I love this graphic. This is from our partners at CareQuest, really talking about the oral systemic connection and how all of these things, um, when poor oral health is present, can be impacted. Everything from high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, mental health care, and things like respiratory and adverse birth outcomes. Really, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is put the mouth back in the body. Um, and as students, I'm sure you hear that all the time um, and talking about the importance of considering the whole person whenever you're going to treatment plan or consider social determinants. All of these things are connected ultimately. Um, and addressing oral health care in the context of the whole person is really critical to um, creating a, a healthy person. So at AIDPH, a lot of our research has actually focused on chronic disease conditions in veterans. And in particular, we've honed in, um, from this graphic, we've honed in on diabetes and heart disease because the evidence was strongest there for the connection to oral health and poor health outcomes. But also, the data were very strong there, indicating cost savings when these things are fully addressed in an integrated care system. So remembering that the VA is the largest integrated healthcare system, veterans are, again, um, ideally treated in an integrated system where chronic disease conditions are considered along with their oral health care needs. So as we were doing this initial research, uh, we looked at survey data that was self-report, but we also looked at large healthcare or large surveillance systems like and Haynes and Burfus, Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System. And what we found is that more veterans have diabetes than non-veterans. So in these chronic disease conditions, non-veterans did not have, or veterans rather had more diabetes and heart disease compared to non-veterans. And again, we know that both of those chronic disease conditions um, adversely impact veterans' oral health and total health and well-being. Interestingly, what we also found is that um, through this BRFIS data that we analyzed, veterans with diabetes and veterans with heart disease um, actually reported more frequently that they had seen a dentist in the past year than non-veterans with diabetes or non-veterans with heart disease. However, when we looked at oral health outcomes, like losing all of your permanent teeth, which is a pretty profound outcome when it comes to oral health, veterans with diabetes and heart disease were more likely to have lost all of their permanent teeth. And I think this is a really interesting finding that it's not just accessing a dentist or seeing a dentist routinely that's keeping um, a veteran from something as profound as losing all of their teeth, but there's something else going on here. There's a lack of oral health care. It's not necessarily access or utilization. There's a lack of oral health and a lack of total integrated management that's occurring for veterans and resulting in poor health outcomes. And in fact, drilling down into this data, even after controlling for things like income and education and morality, things that we know tend to negatively influence oral health, veterans with diabetes were 40% more likely to have lost all of their natural teeth than veterans without diabetes. So the presence of that one chronic disease condition increased their likelihood of indentialism by 40%. The same thing happened with veterans with heart disease. So even controlling for some of those exacerbating health factors, 
veterans with heart disease were 30% more likely to have lost all of their natural teeth than veterans without heart disease. So again, we're talking about very serious health outcomes that are being caused by these chronic disease conditions that veterans disproportionately experience compared to non-veterans. And this matters, obviously, because we want people to be healthy and because health equity matters and quality of life matters. And we don't want particularly working age veterans um, to be losing all of their natural teeth. That's a really profound health outcome. But at the end of the day, this is also a very expensive health outcome. So um, recognizing that there are lots of health models out there, um, analyzing the cost savings, the medical cost savings of managing your oral health with chronic disease conditions, AIDPH took these measures and um, analyzed the cost savings associated with effectively managing these chronic disease conditions. And what our research showed us is that for every dollar spent uh, managing, uh, or I'm sorry, for every dollar spent um, providing comprehensive dental care for veterans with diabetes, a dollar was saved in medical care management for that chronic disease condition. And for heart disease, for every dollar spent, two dollars was saved in medical management for that chronic disease condition. So in a sound bite, diabetes, essentially that medical management process pays for itself through effective oral health care um, access and integration. And with heart disease, you're actually saving money by giving veterans dental care and an integrated system like the VA. So let's dive into a little bit about how you can learn more about veteran oral health. So AIDPH has spent a lot of time um, investing in veteran oral health care. And um, I'm going to show you our um, vet dental data website in just a second. But first, I want to point you to the VA dentistry website, because there are a couple of things you can learn about there. You can learn about what VA dentistry, kind of what the benefits are. You'll learn about what access to care looks like. You'll see some of these data. Um, it's a little bit to, hard to find things on eligibility, but there's some information there. You can also look up dental clinics and locations, and you can look up something that's called the Community Care Network. And that's something that might be important to you as a private practice dentist, and that the Community Care Network is a private dental benefit, so to speak, or it's privately administered, um, but connected still to the VA. So as a private practice dentist, if you would like to provide dental care to veterans through an integrated system like the VA, um, you can register to be in the Community Care Network. And veterans who are not located uh, near one of those 200 dental clinics throughout the US, they can go and see you um, and still be connected into that integrated system, but still receive access to care. It's a really critical access point for veterans um, who can't, who are not located close enough to a VA clinic. So you can act as an extension through that community care network. So I really wanted to highlight that there's still opportunities for you to be invested in this care delivery model and process. But now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and show you our website, vetdentaldata.org, so that if you wanna know more about what veteran oral health looks like either in your state or in your community, um, or look at our research, um, you have opportunities to do that through vetdentaldata.org, which is um, a resource bank developed by AIDPH and CareQuest Institute. So we have these facts kind of scattered throughout, and those are pieces that come from our research, but you also can understand by your state what veteran oral health might look like. So you can know what percentage of veterans are in what state. And we also have a dashboard here where you can look at specific oral health indicators like health, like chronic diseases, 
diabetes and heart disease. You can also look up medical costs and dental costs associated with your geographic region. And you can also look up where community clinics are, both FQHCs and um, dental clinics through the VA. They're all located there. So you'll be able to see what it looks like in your particular area um, and how the access points might impact veteran oral health and chronic disease conditions. In terms of specific publications, we also have state profiles. So let's say I'm interested in learning more about Kentucky, and that's where I live. We've made these really engaging state profiles meant to be sort of fast facts about each state. So at the very top, you'll be able to see how many veterans are in your state and geographically where they're concentrated. Um, veterans are disproportionately concentrated in rural areas, which is why we focus a lot on oral health of veterans in rural areas. So here in Kentucky, about 16.3% of veterans live in a rural county. And again, all of these chronic disease conditions that I've mentioned, both because veterans are disproportionately impacted by these chronic disease conditions, and we know if they are better managed can result in a cost savings for these high risk, high cost veterans. We focused on those particular areas so that you can make the case for more integrated care and better healthcare management for veterans in your state. We also have these rankings here. So um, I guess the higher the ranking, the worse that chronic disease condition is. So um, you don't want to be number one in indentialism, that would mean that you have kind of the worst rates of indentialism in the nation. But we've been able to compare those um, and measuring your state against other states and have done that in a way that we hope can give you the language and the context to be able to talk to decision makers and stakeholders in your particular state through this report card. I think all of us have received a report card at some point in our lives, so we understand the concept, which is the point, is that we understand what it is to, to see a good grade, like an A on uninsured, which is awesome. We also understand what it means to have a failing grade and knowing that this is a baseline for which we can measure um, where our current state is and the areas in which we can make progress. We also have all of our publications here, ranging from um, our most recent one with CareQuest Institute, looking at veteran productivity and well being, where we actually analyzed um, basically what the employer impact is for working age veterans not being able to access dental care and having these chronic disease conditions, um, making it more likely for them to miss work, and what the financial um, and quality impact at, is as a result of that. We also have um, what I thought I would point out today, which is our partnership, oh, which is our partnership with NOAA on a compendium of veteran oral health best practices. So um, AIDPH just launched our new website and we're making sure all of the links match. So you'll have to excuse that. Um, but all of that will be listed very soon. Um, and this is a compendium of clinical best practices. So as you move on in your clinical care journey um, and move into private practice or work for an FQHC, AIDPH and NOAA have put together um, a pretty robust compendium of how to engage in those chronic disease, mitigating those chronic disease conditions in clinical care and working with partners and collaborators in really innovative ways to be able to manage those chronic disease conditions in the veteran demographic. We also have other websites. So if you're looking to get connected to other things, I love this Veteran Data Central website. It's got a lot of really cool demographic information. Um, and we also have quotes, again, from real veterans that we've spoken with or who have responded to our research to add some human context to all of the data that you're seeing. You know, at the end of the day, I, I want to point out that these are real people behind the numbers and that many veterans are suffering from poor oral health. And it is our responsibility in order to move um, a justice-oriented healthcare system forward 
to address this pain um, and to be able to address the lack of access to care um, for our nation's veterans. So I'm gonna stop there today. And I know we only have a few people live, so that's okay. Um, but if there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. And otherwise, we'll just make sure this uh, recording is available to anyone who's interested in watching it asynchronously. Uh, we also, as I already pointed out, have lots of resources, so there's plenty to explore on your own. So I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. Hi, Elise. this is Christina. I have a question. In the work that you have done with AIDPH, have you seen dental schools work closely with the VA to offer the services on site? Oh, that's such a good question. So while I haven't seen dental schools partner with the VA, I would say that is not a common model. Many dental schools act as part of that safety net solution for giving care to veterans. Um, in fact, there are so many dental schools, UNLV included, I'm pretty sure, that have um, like veteran days or weekends where they open up their dental clinic for veterans to come and get um, free or low cost care. And I can tell you that many veterans rely on dental schools as that affordable option for getting care when so many of them can't access care in the VA. So while I, I haven't seen um, that be a successful model unless dental schools through, there's like a Vet Smile pilot program. And if you wanna participate in that and provide pro bono care through that program, you can. But I haven't seen a paid sustainable model of dental schools working with the VA. Thank you, Annalise. And we do have our Sergeant Farron Clinic, which is our veterans clinic that's offered on the weekends at no cost to veterans are not eligible to receive the VA benefits. But one of the things under our current administration is to see how can we strengthen that partnership with our local VA? Could some of their providers come to the dental school to offer treatment and vice versa? So I was just curious if any other schools have even went down this path to explore that partnership. I think it's such an important one to explore, but I have not heard of it being implemented in a in a financially sustainable way, but I, I think it's a fantastic idea. And if there are any other questions, we'll just give a couple seconds. If not, we can go ahead and close out for today. Okay, so hearing none, I will just thank you all for your time and attention. Um, everyone from AIDPH is available to chat about this with you further, both if you're interested in learning about veteran oral health and if you are interested in learning more about our programs here at AIDPH. So I'm just gonna pop back to my slides really quickly and share a couple of opportunities. So um, as I mentioned, the AIDPH Academy provides options, educational options for anyone who's interested in learning more about dental public health. And it's looking for a variety of opportunities that can meet your time and commitment needs, but also your interests. Um, and we, we really aim to provide a, a wide variety um, of opportunities based on currently where you're at with your academic pursuits. So I want to call attention to one program that's currently open and accepting applications, which is our Federal Service Immersion Program. Uh, we just opened that application for a week-long fellowship experience in D.C., where we take um, oral health professionals, including dental students, to D.C., and we go to site visits. We visit federal health agencies. We learn from them. They provide us with all kinds of cool um, access and seminars, um, and that'll be one week in the DC area. So if you're interested in that, we have a link here so that you can look through the application guidance. We're also happy to answer any questions that you may have. And just wanna call attention to two other experiences that are opening soon. We have our Dental Public Health Leadership Academy, which is a year-long leadership program that begins in September each year. Um, those applications will be open within the next two weeks, and that is open to 
you know, really anyone, but in particular, early to mid-career professionals who are interested in gaining leadership skills uh, in a virtual environment. We are also opening applications for our Summer Advocacy Fellowship. This year, our fellowship will focus on advocacy for people with disabilities, and there will also be some veteran opportunities wrapped into that. So if you are interested in participating more in our programming and really investing in a health justice oriented um, education, um, then these might be good for you. So one is open now. We encourage you to apply for it. For the other two, check back to our website or you can email us at info at AIDPH.org and we're happy to chat further with you. Otherwise, thank you and we'll see you soon. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you, guys.